Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. So today was the first time for 21 weeks I have been able to see my nan after the coronavirus pandemic, or should I say with the restrictions now being lifted. I am extremely, extremely close to my nan. She is literally like my second mum and she means the world to me. And it's been so difficult not being able to see her throughout this pandemic. Um, very, very early very early on where my nan lives in uh, she has alzheimer's and she has um been absolutely so incredibly strong for her whole journey throughout this and she fights it all the way it's literally incredible and she's the most amazing beautiful soul the most amazing person ever and very very dear to my heart and i've been privileged in this life with my most amazing amazing mum who i love from the bottom of my heart and my mum's mum my nan which is the most amazing lady. And right from when the coronavirus pandemic started, where my nan lives, which is a little bit like um, like a complex, my nan has a very lovely, uh, almost like an apartment for people with my nan's illness with Alzheimer's. And I've been with her and so has my mum. We've stood together right from the very start of this illness with supporting her. And there's not there's nothing I haven't I haven't sort of been there and supported her with and and um, it's something very very dear to my heart and being told that for her own safety that where my nan was living the care home was going to put them on lockdown so nobody could actually see any of the residents um, was heartbreaking I pleaded begged and just no I've seen my nan once in 22 weeks through a glass window which was my mum couldn't go because she was so upset to even the thought of doing it and it was literally like ripping my heart out and that was back at Mother's Day. Um, so it's been really, really tough and what I've been doing every couple of days is calling to see how my nan is. Is she eating? Is she drinking? How has she been? How is she sleeping? Is there anything she needs? And every now and again we've been taking all her products and things which she uses and all sorts of things for her and gifts and flowers and, and even my nan turned 94 throughout lockdown and my mum cried the whole day where we weren't able to see her and it was just it was devastating it was absolutely devastating we still made sure we gave her her cards and her gifts and things but we haven't not been there on her birthday for many 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 years and that was horrific so after all of those weeks and it's been weeks and weeks and weeks I think it's somewhere now between 20 22 weeks where I haven't seen my nan and um, or been there to be able to be there with her and finally we have been able to visit but however I say visit it's outside in the garden I'm not allowed in my nan's uh, uh, room where she where she lives I'm not allowed in the home where she is we're not allowed in any of the dining rooms or the lounge or anything at all I have to wear a mask I have to wear an apron I have to wear gloves and I have to be in a, under a gazebo in the garden with a screen up in front of us on a table with my nan is one side and I am the other and that's what happened today um, it all started when we could first visit her last week but because my nan has she had seven children, but she has five now, bless her, because bless my auntie and bless my uncle, they're no longer with us. Um, they lost their battle with cancer, bless their hearts. And they're now in heaven. Um, so she has five children, and I thought, even though I've been there all the time, I had to give, We, I, I didn't want to be on and treading on anybody's toes at all. I wanted to give them the opportunity, first of all, to see, to see their mum, of course, and... Um, the where my nan is uh, they have restricted us to only one person one visit per week so yeah considering my nan used to see myself my uncle my mum every week and me throughout the week as well um and my twin brother would visit and my eldest brother would visit and now it's just one person it's really really difficult and it's only for a 20 minute visit and it's outside i cannot hug my nan i cannot kiss her on the cheek i cannot touch when i can't do anything i cannot do anything for her so that's really, really difficult. But last week, my mum visited and had a really lovely time and a lovely visit. But she found it very much the same as me, that because you couldn't put your arms around her. And of course, anybody would know who has 
a loved one with Alzheimer's, you need to you need to put your arms around them, you need to hug them, you need to sort of almost be right in their face for them to sort of click to who you are. And then from that, from that touch of holding hands, from that tone of voice, then they know and and, it, and it, oh, it's just so hard. But this week, because my aunts, my uncles couldn't visit my nan, I jumped in to see my nan. And and well, I have such we all do. We have such a good relationship with the people who look after my nan and the care home managers, and and they all know me. And it's just they they're probably sick and tired of hearing my voice on the phone. To be honest with you, but I visited there. I had an appointment, and um. I, I I went there and I had to wait outside and I was given a mask and, and an apron and gloves and then I was taken around into the garden, couldn't go in the building at all. We used sort of like a side gate entrance and um, I was given a seat and position behind a screen and then shortly after my nan miraculously was having her hair done. I know, and I find it very difficult that a, a hairdresser, the, where my nan is, has its own hairdresser, and my nan had a, was having her hair done, so she was a little bit late to the appointment, which I just thought was my nan all over, because her hair was her life. My nan literally, she always said to my mum, never let me dye a grey-haired hair, uh, lady, and so she has it coloured all the time, so throughout lockdown, when she couldn't have that, it was just awful. My mum always does that for her, um, and, I, <laughs> and I help, but... As soon as we could get her an appointment for the hairdresser, she had her hair coloured and styled and cut, and she was having it done again today. Um, and she was late to the appointment I was waiting for, and I was sat there with a care, and all of a sudden I heard the sliding patio doors go over, and I could see my nan being brought brought out down a ramp, because um, the garden's on a slope round to me, and my jaw just dropped after, I think it's 22, 21 weeks around there, and not seeing my nan, only over the phone. And of course, anybody will know with Alzheimer's, that's very, very difficult. But I've had some chats with her, and I always ask and I always say, can you send my love? Bradley's called, can you send my love? Can you tell my nan that I love her? And wow, when I seen her, she just looked incredible. For somebody who has been throughout lockdown and is turned 94, there's a firework just gone off, which outside, which is just incredible and so, so fitting. And um, just wow. Absolutely wow. And we had a few words. My nan kept looking away. So I was tapping on the table to get my nan's sort of reaction looking at me. And when she clocked who I was, Bradley, her grandson, and I was trying to tell her about all these things we used to do. And when I used to stay with her at weekends and in the summers and the times with me and my mum and my twin brother and, and my nan. And... Um, she looked at me and I got the biggest smile and the biggest grin. It was just amazing. And after she got a little bit tired, but I was only allowed 20 minutes, but they allowed me to stay 30, maybe 40 minutes. And it was just incredible. And it really, really made me feel really quite special, really quite humble and just incredible. So the first time I've been able to see my nan after lockdown and it's been absolute torture, heartbreaking. Splits your heart in two, not being able to see her. I have my own health problems at the moment, but my nan's always been there throughout everything in my life. Always. My first operation, she was there with my mum. When I was going to the prom, I remember telling my, my nan who I planned to take. Um, um, yeah, I can remember telling the girl I wanted to take and getting all nervous about it. I can remember saying to my nan about... She never knew I could sing, and I can't really sing amazingly, but my nan loved the fact that I could sing in the background. I remember showing my nan for the first time ever. I remember doing my homework at my nan's house. I remember the weekends. I remember so, so much her always being there. I remember one of my real horrible operations I went through, and one of the first voices I heard. I had my phone by, by the side of me, and it wasn't long after I was recovering, and um, I think literally minutes and the phone rang and it was my brother and I answered the phone and he had put my nan on the phone straight away and I will always remember that she's just always been there birthday parties Christmas Easter dinner my nan sat at the head of the table um yeah just amazing so to still have my nan after this pandemic is just incredible and I thank the lord every day and I pray every night most nights <laughs> I should say but um yeah I pray for her to always be looked after and to stay healthy and as well as my mum and my dad and my brothers and my nieces and nephews and all of my family. Rarely me, I have to admit. Um, 
But no, and I just know after this time that so many people haven't got their loved ones now and so many people have lost people throughout this pandemic all over the world. And my heart really goes out to you. It's been horrific not seeing my nan and sometimes just seeing the pain and the anguish on my mum's face not being able to see her mum has been awful and especially the tears. Um, so for someone to actually lose their loved one throughout this pandemic, my heart really goes out to you and my sincerest condolences. Um, and I'm, and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for your loss. Today for me was a really, really special day. And I just wanted to catch this on my channel. My channel was all about the bumpy road of life, good and bad. And today was certainly a good point. So thank you for sharing this with me. Thank you very much for watching this clip. And until next time, we will see you then. Bye bye now.